Okay, so it's been a while. Just a bit. Um, we already showed this in class, but uh, let's go over the blob tracking stuff. So this is our in our computer vision series. Uh, this requires the CVJIT library, an external library in Max, and you can download it by clicking on that little box to go to the package manager, which takes, for some reason, uh, an absurd amount of time to actually show up on the screen. Here it is. Okay, so it's called CVJIT, and if you just type in CV, you should populate here. There's this library here called CV.JIT, and you just hit install, and it's going to install a bunch of externals uh, that all start with CV.JIT, um, and these are like... Amazing. Well, they're amazing, but they're they're part of the um, CV. This they're like standard CV objects that each each of them does some small thing. None of them does magical stuff on its own. You still have to sort of know what each of these CV objects is doing, uh, but they do sort of basic computer vision functions. And if you connect them together in the right way, you can get some pretty interesting computer vision systems to work pretty quickly in Max. And uh, so this uh, set of tutorials we have here is how to implement what's called blob tracking. And that's a basic CV computer vision technique where once you get your video into a black and white format, you can easily track the centroids or the center points of these white blobs on a black background. And that sounds kind of stupid and not useful, but it turns out so it's, it's useful. really useful and, yeah. and really fun. Um, and not terribly computationally expensive. We always talk about that in class. It's, yeah. it's ideal computationally expensive. In other words, so some stuff takes tons of CPU. Like when we were doing all the face tracking stuff, it takes that's really CPU intensive. So we had to do a lot of work to get that to work well without eating your entire budget, computational budget. All right, let's look at um, some basics here. Um, so we'll start off with just color tracking. Um, <clears throat> so color tracking, I typically advise students <laughs> not to do color tracking because it only works super well when you have ideal situation. Like if you have really perfect video coming in with good lighting and you can easily, in other words, if you have video where you can easily identify color, then it works great. Right. Very rarely does anyone have video that's that is going to work great with color tracking. But right. so, you know, it's great when it works when you can get it to work well, but usually you can't. So, all right, I have this perfect video here. Um, oh, it's got audio. Okay. So, I put a little turntable together and put these three colored dots on there and just kind of spun it around uh, in order to make... This is recorded video, but this was recorded with a digital SLR in complete manual mode with mm -hmm. nice lighting. Um, so the manual, manual focus, manual exposure, manual white balance, everything is manual. So I, so I was trying to get the most ideal actual video input that, that I could get. And so let's turn that rate off for a second because we need to click on the orange here and that tells what we're going to track. So uh, the way you track a, a color is you use jit.findbounds. This is not actually part of the CV library, so this is just built into Max. It's called jit.findbounds. And you give it this, the two colors, a min color and a max color. And you do that by sending an RGB min and an RGB max. And as long as the color falls in between those t min and max values, It'll draw. It'll give you the bound, the, the boundary of that color. So I clicked on the orange, and I'm using this uh, object that will d tell you what the color of the thing you clicked on is. And I just laid it over top of um, the uh, P window. Actually, this object is called Sucka. I don't know what that Sucka. means or what it stands for, but that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever you click on, Sucka will tell you the XY coordinate of what you clicked on and give you the color, um, the RGB color of whatever it is, pixel, whatever pixel you clicked on. So I clicked on the orange, and that goes up here to these color grabbers. And um, for the max, I want to just shift the color out a little bit. You can see it's like tracking one little tiny area, but we're going to give it some flexibility to track a wider range of oranges just by moving the max away a little bit. And maybe we can move the, uh... okay, there we go. So now <clears throat> when I start it up, um, it is doing a pretty decent job of tracking that orange dot. Um, let's see, what did I do here? Oh, here I'm just drawing the target. So here I'm just drawing the target on there. Uh, here is, the, the one on the left is the actual fine bounds rectangle. 
Um, and then I'm taking the center of that uh, and drawing the standard you know, target thing that I've made before. Um, so just two different ways to identify what it is. So let's click on the green one. All right, so we got the green, but we need to expand the uh, the range of what it can track, what it considers to be green. And so that's working pretty well. So this works well. It does. It actually works really well when you have, but it's a very controlled you have to keep in mind, it's an yeah. incredibly controlled environment. Typically what students want to do is in a fairly dark room with a crappy webcam, they want to put oh. a yellow post-it note up and mm -hmm. then, you know, track it or whatever. Right. Or, or they want to just track a skin color, mm -hmm. you know, or something where it's incredibly vague and ambiguous what the color is right. in the first place. And then on top of that, they have a camera where it's always, you know, the exposure value is always changing on the camera. Right. And it's trying to figure out like, yeah, so it just, and then they wonder why isn't this color tracking? Our eyes are incredibly sensitive and Especially we can yeah. easily track a color with our eyes, but to tell a computer to do that is a lot harder. So that's color tracking and it works well with perfect video works pretty terrible with most other videos. He's so, so. against it. <laughs> I, you know, it's, I'm, ag I'm not against using it. No, I know, I know. It's, it's especially, just, I mean, I, I used it on some patches and it was extremely effective, but it was looking at a board that didn't move Yeah. and the color was good. Yeah. And, you know, so that it just depends on what you're doing. There are situations where I do use it and it's very useful, especially when you have a black and white video and you want to just trap really, it you want to just find the boundaries of whatever the white blob is mm -hmm. uh, it can work really well and I used this to make a head tracker and it worked really good but it was just to track white pixels it wasn't to track a specific color right so all right cool. um, let's stop there